In this video, you'll learn what weighting means when converting Alma data into an image, and how your choice of weighting scheme affects that image and the science that you can address. In contrast to direct imaging, for example with a CCD camera on an optical telescope, an interferometer like ALMA or the Jansky Very Large Array samples the power spectrum of the sky brightness distribution. This power spectrum is equivalent to the Fourier transform of the sky and is usually called the UV plane by radio astronomers. In a single integration, typically a few seconds or less, each pair of antennas in an interferometer samples a complex conjugate pair of points in the UV plane. Each pair of points in the UV plane is called a visibility. By combining many pairs of antennas, and by letting the sky rotate over the array, a large part of the UV plane is sampled. In principle, the visibilities can simply be inverted using an inverse Fourier transform to recreate the sky image. The more visibilities there are, the better the coverage of the UV plane, and the better the Fourier transform will be able to represent the sky. With Alma's many antennas, a large part of the UV plane is sampled very rapidly. In theory, it should be a simple matter to convert from the sampled UV plane to an image by taking an inverse Fourier transform. A complication arises from the fact that the visibilities do not regularly sample the UV plane. As an example, here is a snapshot of Alma visibilities from a fairly typical configuration. The density of points near the center of the UV plane that is at small UV distances, is much higher than out here at large distances. Since most digital transform algorithms need a uniform grid in order to work, the visibilities have to be gridded. When gridding, you have a choice of how to weight the individual visibilities within each grid cell. The choice you make will affect the properties of the final image. The most intuitive weighting scheme for combining data is to average the visibilities within each grid cell, resulting in a constant total weight for each grid. This is called uniform weighting. Said another way, all grid cells are treated equally in the resulting image. This minimizes side lobes in the point spread function and yields an image with high angular resolution, but at the cost of sensitivity to extended emission. Here you see an image of the young star Ru Lupi and its planet-forming disk, created with uniform weighting. The point spread function on the right is sharp, with very low side lobes. The image on the left shows narrow gaps in the circumstellar disk, however the image is noisy and the extended structure isn't very clear at all. In this case, the scientific goal was to measure the size of the gaps, and so high angular resolution and minimizing side lobe contamination were the priorities. If, say, you were more interested in the extended structure of the disk, you might want to consider other weighting schemes. To maximize sensitivity, you can use so-called natural weighting, in which all of the visibilities are individually weighted according to their RMS noise level, and are then summed within each grid cell. Since lower spatial frequencies, that is, shorter baselines, are sampled more often than the higher ones, we find that the inner UV plane will have a significantly higher density of samples, and thus higher total imaging weights per grid cell. The higher imaging weights for the inner UV plane will result in an image in which short baselines are emphasized, causing the beam to be larger. In other words, the resolution will be worse than for uniform weighting. The upside to natural weighting, however, is an increased signal to noise in the resulting image. Here again is RU Lupi, but now imaged using natural weighting. The full extent of the disk is now quite clear and smooth, but the point spread function, the beam, is larger, and the side lobes are quite extensive. If your primary goal is to just detect a source and you need the maximum possible signal to noise from the dataset, then natural weighting is a clear choice. But there is a way to combine the benefits of uniform and natural weighting. In his 1995 PhD thesis, Daniel Briggs introduced the idea of robust weighting, also called Briggs weighting. In Briggs's thesis, he describes robust weighting as visibility weighting that varies smoothly from uniform to natural weighting as a function of a single parameter, the robustness R. 
Let's go back to our Are You Loopy image. We've added several panels. Here is a horizontal slice through the center of the point spread function. On the left is a graphical representation of the trade-off between resolution and noise for a given value of r. As we can see, at r equals minus 2, we have the best possible angular resolution, but the image is very noisy. Let's see what happens as we change r. Starting at minus 2 and raising r, the image quickly becomes more clear while the beam broadens more slowly. Between r equals 0 and 0 0.5, we've reached the knee of the trade-off curve. We've decreased the noise of the image greatly at the cost of only slightly worse resolution. Since these values of R most effectively blend resolution and sensitivity, they're an excellent starting point for most imaging projects. Increasing R further, we begin to broaden the beam faster and for much less gain in sensitivity than before. Nevertheless, at R equals 2, the image has the lowest possible RMS noise, as we saw with natural weighting. We strongly encourage taking some time to examine and consider these trade-offs. When selecting the robustness parameter for your own imaging, ask yourself key questions about your dataset and scientific goals, and remember you can always re-image your own data with different values of R and see the differences for yourself, now that you understand the advantages and pitfalls of different weighting schemes. Thank you so much for watching. We hope this video has helped you out. There are a couple more links to different videos and resources that could be useful for you up on screen now. Good luck with your imaging, and we will see you next time.